All right, let's do a refresher on percents and take a closer look at our new calculation percent error. First of all, percent, no matter what it is, is part divided by whole times 100. The part you're interested in looking at divided by the whole number times 100. Let's say I have a class. 22 students. And let's say four are absent that day. We're going to calculate the percent absent and then we're going to calculate the percent present. To do the percent absent, our part would be the number of students that we were missing that day. The four students that are absent. Be four divided by the whole, the number of students that are in that class, 22, times 100. Touch that in the calculator. That's 18%. And I would be specific when I wrote it down. I would write 18% absent so I know what that percentage is. That percentage could be the number there. It could be the number absent. We want to tell the reader which one it is. We have 18% absent. Now let's calculate the percent present. I normally have 22 students. I have four absent, so I do 22 minus four. I have 18 students present that day. I'm gonna divide it by the 22 that I'm supposed to have. So 18 divided by 22, and then I'm gonna multiply by 100. 81.8% is what it says. I'll round that to a whole number and make it 82%. I I had 82% of my students present that particular day. Now, if I do both halves, if I do the number missing and the number that are present, when I add those two values together, I should get 100%. So it's a good way to check if you're asked to do both parts, whether or not you've done it right. Technically speaking, because I am using the same class, I could have found this answer by using the 18% that I'd already calculated. I could have alternatively done this as 100% of the class minus the 18% that were missing and found my 82% present that way. Either technique would work if you're calculating both, you know, do whatever. Again, the basic underlying principle that being that those two parts, when you add them together, has to be 100%. We can take these percents and we can convert them into decimals. And to do that, we're just going to move the decimal point two places to the left. So 75%, if we want to convert that into a decimal, we would move that decimal point two places to the left. That's 0.75. 47%. Again, if we want to convert that into a decimal, we'll move that decimal point two places to the left, 0 0.47. These percents are important when you're trying to calculate a part. Let's say on Friday, I had 12% of my class absent. Let's say my normal class size for that particular class was 21 students. And I want to know how many of my students were missing. Well, what I'd have to do is convert that percentage to a decimal and multiply it by my number of students. 0.12 times 21. Rounding it to a whole number, calculator says 2.52. Rounding that to a whole number, I had three students absent.
Now, why would I round it to a whole number? Well, I can't have half a student. Uh, so I have to have my students in whole numbers. Three students would have been absent.